Hey everybody, my name is Jake, welcome to the channel. In today's video, I wanna do another Review My Pie video. And if my voice sounds a little bit rough or scratchy, I, I apologize. I'm down here in Texas and we've gotten a lot of dust. Uh, you may, may have heard about it. There's the Sahara dust that's been coming up from, from the south and uh, just kind of been playing with my, my allergies here. So if my voice sounds a little cracky, I apologize. I'm not sick. It's just kind of the uh, the allergies from, from the air here. But if you're new to the channel, on, on the channel here, I, I talk about dividend growth investing. And really the goal here that I'm trying to achieve is achieve financial independence and retire early. So I follow the FIRE, FIRE movement here. And I'm trying to do so by creating cash flow through my dividend portfolio. Uh, essentially what I'm trying to do is create a, a second source of income so that my passive income or my, my dividends can then one day fully supplement my living expenses and some. So that's kind of the background of who I am. I'm in my, my mid thirties. I've been investing for over 10 years. I've tried many different things. I've made a lot of money. I've lost a lot of money and I created this YouTube channel to help other people. Really that, that was the, the goal of it. When I started the channel. Um, I, you know, I was doing my own research here on YouTube. Uh, some YouTubers that I saw, first one was PPC Ian, right? You may have, you may have seen some of his videos, but really I was really inspired by other people. And, you know, I just wanted to help other people. And so I created this channel to talk about dividend investing and share with, with the community here, what, what I'm doing, what's, what's worked for me and what hasn't. And part of that is I've started this review my pie series where I review subscriber portfolio portfolios. It doesn't have to be here on M1 Finance, you know, the portfolio, if it's on Robinhood or even just an Excel spreadsheet, um, I'm more than happy to review it. I've gotten a lot of positive feedback from, from all of you that have watching the, that have watched the series that uh, they've, you know, you've see, received a lot of value. And that, that really is why, why I do it is to help other people. And really that's, that's the goal. So in today's video, I want to, I want to go like in similar videos in the series, I'm going to review six portfolios and I've already selected the ones that I'm going to choose based off of the emails. So I have some that are in their 20s, some that are in their 30s, I believe one's even in their late 40s. And so there's a, a good spread between different age groups. And as always, I don't review the portfolios before I, I review them. So I don't, I don't look into them and see, okay, pre-script what I'm going to say. So everything that I'm sharing with you is, is if I were like live streaming it, I guess you could say. So I'm seeing the portfolios for the same time. And as always, everybody, I'm not a financial advisor. I don't have, I'm not, not a CPA. I didn't, don't have a finance background. Um, I actually have a marketing and sales background, um, ironically enough. I, I work in the, the tech industry here in Austin, Texas. I'm a, I'm a software sales manager and I... You know, I sell software. I don't sell financial products or, or services. So that is not my background by trade, by my, my educational background. Everything that I share is really self-taught. Things that I've learned from personal experience, books that I've read or blogs that I've read or, or other channels here on YouTube. Like, like I mentioned that I've learned from other people. And so the, the portfolios that I want to share, it's really just for, for your entertainment. It's not for financial advice. Okay. So um, let's go ahead and let's dive into the first portfolio. All right. The first portfolio is going to be from Ramiro and Ramiro writes, hi Jake, I came across your channel a couple of weeks ago and enjoyed watching various M1 portfolios that you review as well as your opinion and insights on investing strategies. I'm currently 31 years old. The goal of this taxable portfolio is to hopefully use this money for income uh, for income source for when I retire. I currently add a hundred dollars a week to the to this portfolio and plan on adding more if there are any major dips in the market. I would like your thoughts on my portfolio allocations and input on deleting or adding any additional companies. Investing has really become a hobby for me and looking forward to learning from you and others on this channel. Keep up the good work, Ramiro. All right, great. Well, Ramiro, first off, thank you for sending over your portfolio. You're 31 years old. You're you're adding a hundred dollars a week to your portfolio. You're lo you're doing this in a taxable account, so this is important. These are all pieces of information that I'm I'm first kind of trying to understand before you know talking talking through your portfolio. 
All right, let's take a look at your portfolio. It looks like you're up over 84% over the last four years. You have 36 holdings. You have zero, uh, you have no expense ratio, so you have no ETFs. You have a good dividend. 2.7 is, is a good starting dividend. And now, when you're if you're 31 years old, this is a good dividend. If you were 20 years old, this may be, may, may be a little bit high. You could maybe lean more towards the side of growth. If you were in your 40s, um, or early 50s, I would say, all right, we should actually look to get a little bit more. But 2.7, this is a really, really good dividend yield. Okay, you didn't mention your goals in terms of when you would like to retire because this is really important. You, you mentioned that this is a hobby of yours. So one thing that you're going to notice as you learn more about investing, you learn more about your, you know, you try to understand more of your goals, your risk fact, you know, you're understanding your risk uh, tolerance, all of those good things. You're going to understand, okay, what is my investing time horizon? And that's going to dictate a lot of your decision making. And so that would be my first piece of feedback for you or, or advice is know your goal. Know your goal. And, and I always suggest really think big. You know, if you, if you aim for the stars and you land on the moon, you know what? It's okay. Looking at your portfolio, how it's allocated, and this is another question that you had in terms of the allocation. Uh, you're 21% in technology. This is a good, healthy balance. I personally don't like having more than 25% in any given sector or industry. So that's that's my rule of thumb. 25% is 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 pushing it. Um, you got 15% in healthcare, communications, 12, real estate, 11, financials, 11, consumer staples, nine, discretionary, nine, materials, one, and utilities, five. Okay, so it doesn't look like you have energy, which is completely fine. I like the allocation. I think the only thing, you know, off the bat here is maybe you could bump down communication services. Communication is not really a, a, uh, a growth sector. Um, industrial, yeah, you could maybe bump that up. Uh, I personally, I, I really, really like the industrial uh, sector. I really like the the track record there. Maybe maybe substitute a little bit more or add a little bit more to uh, your staples, your consumer staples, and a little bit less in communi communication services. That's just you know overall overall thought that I that I had looking here at your portfolio. So technology you got 215 over the last five years. You got four holdings, Microsoft, Visa, Apple, and Cisco. These are these are really, really good. I don't think that you can go wrong with this at all. Now the thing is, you're not it's gonna take you a long time to be able to uh, to have the portfolio here with a one percent current yield to pay for your living expenses. Like really, really pay for it. If you do the math Compound, you know, you compound it over 10, 20, or 30 years. With this, this is going to take at least 15 years, more like 20 or 25 years, to really reap the the true value of of the compounding, uh, the miracle of compounding with the technology sector. So, if you're 30, understand that you're going to have a massive portfolio value, but the dividend payout is not going to be as high, which is okay, right? We talk about the dividend growth. Um, this is this is ideal for all those viewers that are in their 20s, right? But the fact that you only have 21% in it, I think it's absolutely fine. Looking at healthcare, um, you got AbbVie, Johnson & Johnson, and CVS. Okay. I... I like all three of these. I own two of the three. I don't own CVS. I, I think CVS and Walgreens. I think they're they're fine. Um, I just personally don't don't invest into them. I really like Johnson and Johnson. I like AbbVie. I I personally think of the three here, Johnson and Johnson is the uh, the highest quality. And if I were to if I were to allocate these, I would skew more heavily in Johnson and Johnson. Me personally, communication services. You got Facebook, Disney, at and and Comcast. Yeah, Facebook is, I mean, you, it's not a dividend company, but I mean, for, for growth, you can, you can definitely, you know, you can have it in the portfolio. What I like to talk a lot about is separating the portfolios, have a portfolio for your dividend portfolio, have a portfolio for your growth, uh, growth stocks. Um, you can do that directly in M1 Finance by having multiple accounts under the same login. Other people do, you know, what you could do is you could have in a different brokerage. Um, but I personally like separating growth stocks from dividend growth stocks, personally. Uh, Disney is great. AT&T and Comcast, those, those are great. Um, if you wanted to look into another one, you could look into Verizon. Uh, real estate, these are, these are really good. You got realty income store, 
uh, digital realty trust and medical properties. Yeah. I really like cell towers as well. Um, if you've been following this series, I talk a lot about cell towers like AMT or Crown Castle, ticker symbol AMT and ticker symbol CCI, I believe. And I really like public storage um, and uh, extra space uh, storage. Those are just kind of my, my favorite. But And also Prologis um, is also another really good uh, industrial REIT. Um, financials, you got foreign here, you got JP Morgan, Bank of America, Toronto, uh, TD is a, is a good bank, um, Aflac as well. These are, these are really, really good. I don't think you can go wrong with any of these personally. Uh, consumer staples, you got Pepsi, Kimberly Clark, uh, Walmart and Costco. This is absolutely great. All, all of these are in my portfolio. Um, this is, uh, this is, th these are great, uh, discretionary. You got Lowe's, you got Target, Starbucks, Nike, and Amazon. All, all of these are, are you know, on these. These are amazing companies, right? I, you can't go wrong with any of these. In terms of the allocation, I don't have, I don't own Lowe's or Starbucks or Amazon in my portfolio, though they're they're all really great companies. I do own Target. I do like Nike. One that you could also look at that I'm a huge fan of is McDonald's ticker MCD. McDonald's really really good dividend growth. Uh, consumer discretionary company. Industrials, you got four, you got Caterpillar, Union Pacific, Waste Management, 3M. These are all great. Absolutely great. I wouldn't change a thing with this. Great companies. Um, utilities, you got Nextera Energy, Duke. So all three of them are absolutely great. I like, I like Dominion as well. Uh, I think uh, these, you know, having the most in next air energy, you are spot on. This is exactly what you should be doing. Materials, you just have Ball Corp. I'm not familiar with Ball. Um, there's a few great dividend growth uh, material companies. Some that really com come to mind uh, are uh, Echolab, uh, ticker symbol ECL. Huge fan of Echolab and uh, APD. There's there's some other others that are that are really good. All right. Well, Ramiro, I think your portfolio is great for your age. There's only 36 holdings in there. I think that you have a just a, a really, really strong portfolio. If you were to add additional holdings in there, there, there's only a few things that I would add. Maybe consider separating your growth stocks from your, your dividend stocks. The way that you approach these, at least the way that I approach them, they're, they're so, so different. I, I don't like having them in the same brokerage personally. So that is something that you could consider. Also, if you would like, um, maybe even considering a few uh, dividend growth ETFs. I'm a big fan of holding individual companies. I hold individual companies, but also the more that I that I re do my own research and the more that I you know, I'm invested, the more money that I'm adding to my portfolio. For me personally, the emotional benefit that comes with investing into broad-based, low-fee ETFs, I've gotten a, I, I really, really am a, I'm a big fan of it. So I don't invest 100% into ETFs or 100% individual companies. I, I like to take a balance. So if you were to go into the future and add additional holdings, consider low-fee ETFs and consider separating your growth stocks from your dividend stocks. But thank you again. You have a great portfolio. All right, let's take a look at the next one. The next one is from Mohammed. Um, Mohammed writes, I really enjoy your review series on YouTube. I don't use M1 as my main brokerage, so I'm sending you this pivot table and chart from Excel. I hope this format works. Uh, a little bit of background, I'm 26 years old and I've been investing consistently for about a year. I really like dividend investment for the future, but right now I have a lot of non-dividend tech stocks. Thanks. All right, so let's take a look at your portfolio. It looks like you have 25 holdings. You have Apple, you have Microsoft, you got Johnson & Johnson, a lot of blue chip companies. A lot of these are really established companies. You got Travelers down there, Caterpillar, Avvi, Colgate. These, these are really, really high quality. You have quite a few Dividend Kings. Uh, Dividend King is a company that is paid or has paid an increasing dividend consecutively for over 50 years. So you have some dividend kings in here. All right, and so what I'm looking for is, it looks like you have the sector allocation as well. So you, you have a lot in, you have a lot in Apple and in Microsoft. This is really good. You have a well diversified, you don't have a lot in real estate, you don't have a lot in energy, you don't have, like, 
every every industry is well diversified. It looks like I'm seeing more in consumer. Well, no, actually, there's really fair diversification. This is really really good. Um, you got telecom as as well with AT and T. You got energy. You got utilities with Southern Company. These are really really high quality companies. I'm looking in here. I think every single one of these of your holdings is in my portfolio, with the exception of Exxon Mobil and with with uh, Starbucks. Every other company, I believe, I have in my portfolio as well. So this is great. Let's take a look and see at your other tabs here, um, or let's scroll over here. Let's see what you got. Uh, you see, you have a bro. You you're following it by um, the portfolio. Uh, waiting so that's really really good so the most is an apple microsoft johnson and johnson pepsi this is really really good i can tell that you put a lot of thought into this this is really really good and i i can only imagine how exciting it is for you right when you're tracking this and you, you're planning for the future this is this is great um this is the robin hood portfolio tab down here okay you got the dividend yield over here the payout great robin hood sector allocation okay you got the sector allocation technology you have a lot in technology which is good you mentioned that you were in your 20s so having more in in technology is is great you have some in etfs as well which etfs do you have okay you got etfs you got berkshire well i guess you could kind of consider berkshire as an etf i i, I pretty much agree with you there sphd and voo um, SPHD has, has gotten a lot of hype here on YouTube. A lot of YouTubers talk about SPHD. Um, I, I've made a video about it in the past, but I, I don't know. I'm, I'm more a bigger fan of the tried and true with the S&P 500 dividend appreciation uh, ETF from Vanguard and such. Uh, what do you got here? Raw data. Okay, cool. And the payments, this uh, this one is empty. Okay. Well, cool. So I, I think you, I think you know what you're doing. I think you have really, really high quality companies. So here's, here's my initial feedback here. I think every single one of these companies, they're established high quality, uh, dividend growth companies in, in every case that I've, I've seen so far. Um, the majority of them I own, I own in my own portfolio. I think you, you know what you're doing and, uh, my hat goes off to you, Mohammed. Great job. All right, let's take a look at the next one. The next one is going to be from Oki. Oki writes, I recently sent my pie to you. I watched your last video in June. Still love your review of personal portfolios. I made some changes to my portfolio and strongly believe that uh, that I will build on this for a long term. I think you, uh, I think, okay, I think you sent me another email. So this is a follow-up email to that. That's right. I remember that. Um, you continue here. I came across your videos on YouTube. I subscribed after I watched the first video that I came across. I love what you're doing. Keep it up. Hey, thank you so much. I, I really, really appreciate you, you saying that. You continue writing here. I'm 47 years old. I currently have a Fidelity Roth IRA account and currently max out my annual contribution. I love M1 Finance because of their user interface and ease of use. I love their desktop version, by the way, and I also love their app version. So I, I completely agree with you. You mentioned in one of your videos how one can be emotional with stocks because of the associated volatility and also when one has too many stocks. I found myself uh, sell and rebuy same stock same stock within within a month. I've been there and done that as well, which uh, which hasn't been profitable to me. I actually sold all of my utility companies today and will be buying them back uh, the next uh, trading day. I currently invest $100 a week uh, weekly to the main portfolio account. I plan henceforward to leave this portfolio alone. Um, I have one main account and two sub accounts. I'll be adding the links below for your review. Okay, great. So Oki, okay, when you when you talk about the emotional part of this, especially buying in and selling, it's really difficult. You, you constantly change your mind. The thing is, what I've noticed is, and this has to do with, with the media, with your circle, you know, with the, those that you, you associate yourself with, your friends and your family, when you maybe talk about finances or you hear about a new idea. A lot of our decision making is emotional. And that's what I've learned myself. The longer you can, the, the more you can focus on the long term, the easier it's going to be for you to make rational decisions. The stock market is not, is not uh, a rational uh, market. It's, it's, it's a very volatile market and very irrational for that matter. 
the fact that it's going up with this virus and with everything that is going on with the quantitative easing with, you know, with the Fed printing money, it's not a rational market. So what's helped me is to really focus long term. And the fact that you, you sell your stocks one day and then you buy them back another day, I don't really have a, a formula for su success there other than understand what you're buying when you buy it. When you buy a stock or when you buy an ETF, understand that you're buying part of a business. OK, and I love the fact of what you know, I love the quote from Warren Buffett. If you don't plan on holding a stock for at least 10 years, don't don't plan on holding it for one day. Right. And, and try to have that mindset. So let's take a look at your portfolios here. All right. Your first portfolio is a growth tech. And this is actually great. This is what I was talking about just um, a minute ago in the previous review is separating your portfolios with growth, you know, having growth stocks in one portfolio, having dividend stocks in another portfolio. I really think this will, will help, whether it's all in sub accounts within M1 Finance or in different brokerages. I just think it, it helps personally. So with this with this one, you're up 387 percent. So this is definitely a growth a growth portfolio. You got 14 holdings. Um, you got Tesla in there. You got XLK, Google, Amazon, Facebook, Nvidia. Uh, Nvidia is actually a dividend growth stock. So you could even hold this in your dividend growth portfolio. This is really, if you want the dividend growth from here, you really got to be in your 20s, in my opinion, to reap the the real value of the uh, the growth from Nvidia. You got Square, you got eBay, CRM, Salesforce, Group, uh, Global Payments, AMD, Netflix. Yeah, this is these are really great. I mean, there's there's not really a lot of companies in here where I'd say, okay, well, are they going to be bankrupt tomorrow? Like that's kind of what I'm looking for. A lot of these, you know, in some in some cases they may be speculative. You know, what's going to happen with Tesla? I I haven't researched Tesla in in detail. Um, I've heard really good things about it, but I've also heard other things. So I I don't know. I'm not I'm not really the specialist there. You could probably tell me more about it. Um, when it comes to real estate, this is your other portfolio. You have nine holdings in here. You got Realty Income, you got DLR, you got LTC, AMT, Store, Stag, and Simon Properties. Okay, so you got 20, over 20, almost 30% in retail. That's kind of high. A lot of exposure to retail. Realty Income is really good. DLR is good. Um, some that you could take a look at, I personally like, if you're in your late 40s, take a look at public storage. Public storage has a high current yield. They don't grow it as fast, the dividend, but that is a great consistent payer with a high current dividend. In your case, where you're in your late 40s, I would recommend going for a higher starting yield, which you currently have, right? You have a 4.8% dividend yield. Limit, I guess, your exposure to no more than what you already have. You got about 25% here in your growth. DLR and AMT are really growth oriented. They have a lower yield, right? If you look here, it has a lower yield, DLR. If you look at AMT, it's got a 1.6. Um, take a look at, at public storage and extra space storage. Uh, those are two really, really good reads that I like, especially in your uh, your late, late 40s. Let's take a look at the last one here. This is your passive income one. This is your dividend portfolio. You're up 51%. You have a 3.4 dividend yield. This is good. Um, you're in your late 40s. That you, you don't want it lower than three. I mean, three and a half to 4% is kind of a sweet spot if you're in your late 40s, in my opinion. Um, your dividend ETFs, you got 20%. You got utilities, consumer, technology, finance. Okay, good. I, I actually, I really agree with your your allocation here. This is good. Let's take a look and see what you got in here. You got VYM, great SPYD, great SCHD, great, great. All three of these, this is exactly what I was hoping to see. You're 47 years old. This is what you want to have in your portfolio. You don't want to have a dividend growth ETF. You don't want to have VOO. You don't want to have V, like in a lot of cases, if this is a passive income portfolio, you want to have a higher starting yield. This is great. Um, I, I've also really done a lot of research into SPYD in these last couple of months. I actually kind of like it. I don't have it in my portfolio, but I kind of like it. It might be something for my wife, my wife's portfolio. Uh, utilities, you got four, you got Dominion, Energy, uh, Nexar Energy, Duke, and Southern Company. These are great. These are great. Consumers, you got 10. Let's see how you got it allocated. Pepsi, Walmart, Costco. You may, so here's the thing, right? Okay, you're you're 47. You're not going to get a lot of value out of Costco from the dividend. 
you're not going to get a lot of value. Um, in my opinion, you would be better off upping up either Home Depot, Lowe's, Target, and lowering Costco. Costco is a great growth stock. It's a great dividend growth stock. But this would be a stock if you're in your 20s or early 30s, in my opinion. Um, you're not going to see the, uh, the value in your lifetime. Maybe if you want to leave your portfolio for your, your family. But in your lifetime, you're not going to see the, the real, real value of Costco until many years down the road. I definitely, I can definitely see still keeping in your portfolio. I own it in my portfolio, right? But maybe lower it. Say, okay, well, Coke has a much higher starting yield. And I'm assuming you're looking to tap into your dividends here in the next maybe 15 years or so, 10 or 15 years. You want a higher current yield. Um, and that's why I would recommend lowering Costco and upping one of these others. In my opinion, I, I really like Coca-Cola in this case. Uh, technology. You got Microsoft, Apple, Cisco, Intel, Broadcom. The, these are good. The fact that you have it at 13%, yeah. I mean, this is this is this is absolutely fine. Finance, you got Main Street, Visa, MasterCard, JP Morgan. Another one with this one, this is kind of what I was talking about with Costco, but maybe replace Visa and MasterCard down here with around six or seven percent and bump one of these others uh, up uh, a little bit more that have more of a higher current yield. Uh, communications, you got AT&T, Verizon, Comcast, and Disney. Um, similarly, with Disney, you're 47 years old, you should likely lower this. Um, bump up these three and lower this to maybe maybe five or 10%, in my opinion. Once again, you're just, you're not gonna reap the benefit of, of the dividend. I mean, this is really high, um, but uh, I have, I, I hold AT&T in my portfolio, but like, your with your age group, you wanna you wanna focus more on on a higher yield. Uh, industrials, you got Lockheed Martin, Union Pacific. Great, these are all really really great. These are great. Uh, I wouldn't really. I don't think you'd necessarily like. There's nothing really that stands out here that I would say. All right, hey, okay, you should probably change this. I think this is great. Uh, healthcare, you got Abby, Merck, Johnson and Johnson. I, these are great. These are great. I wouldn't change anything. Energy, these are great. Um, I used to have energy in my portfolio. I've shared this in many videos in, over the last couple of weeks. Um, but yeah, if uh, if I were to hold any energy stocks, individual stocks, I would hold Chevron and Exxon. The ETFs that I own, for example, VYM, has a, a good percentage allocated to, uh, to energy as well. So I don't feel the need personally to own energy stocks in my portfolio. But having it at 2%, these are great high quality uh, energy companies. Bonds, yeah. I mean, if it makes you feel feel good, uh, I think uh, I think definitely you know with bonds at one percent, at your age group you could even have more. Um, but I personally, I think this is I think this is absolutely absolutely great. So of the three portfolios that I viewed, I'm obviously a little biased. I like this portfolio the best. I think uh, I think this is a really really high quality portfolio. Thank you so much for sending this over, Oki. All right, the next one is here from Jordan. Jordan writes, good evening, Jake. My name is Jordan from Arizona. I love your content. Hey, Jordan, thank you so much. I appreciate you saying that. I'm a 25-year-old who has been investing for seven months. I want to build this into a portfolio that I will never have to liquidate and can, can pass on to those who survive me one day. That is that is great. I, I, I'm actually right there with you. I have the same... Uh, same approach. As I get older, I will change the allocations accordingly. However, I do not plan on ever rebalancing or selling anything in here. Uh, only changing the percentages towards certain funds and assets markets as I continue to put money in. It is focused on growth and capital, uh, growth of capital and dividend income. I understand that the expenses are on the higher side, but I spend a lot of time finding what I believe are the best funds. Okay, so you're talking about ETFs here. Currently, I have about 47,000 invested. Wow, 47,000 and you're 25 years old. Holy cow, man. Somebody, man, you, uh, you got something right. Uh, investing 2,000 a month. So typically when I see this, if you if you got 47,000 in there, that likely means you don't have a lot of debt, consumer debt. That means you you make a good income and you have low expenses. 
So this is really, really great to see. Long term forever, we'll never liquidate anything unless a certain fund is closing. Every three years, I plan to add 1% to preferred shares and add 1% to bonds, okay? Every 10 years, 2% to REITs. I will lessen my exposure, exposure to emerging markets as time goes on, eventually set, setting somewhere around eight to 12%. I will lessen my exposure to small cap funds as time goes on. Okay, so so Jordan, this is great. I, I love the fact that you have it so well detailed um, and organized in what you want to accomplish. Okay, let's take a look at your portfolio. All right, so your portfolio is up 13%. It's called Global Dividend and Growth, okay? You have a 0.32% expense ratio. Yeah, you, you mentioned that. That is a little bit high. Uh, current dividend yield of 3.5% and you have 30 holdings in here. International developed equity, emerging market equity, domestic, bonds, real estate, and preferred stock. Okay, let's take a look and see what you have in international developed equity. Uh, it looks like you have only ETFs here. You have DLS, you have VEA, uh, VYMI, do, okay. So you have a lot of, you have a lot in international. Okay, so here's the thing. This is my opinion on this. This is traditionally what what Dave Ramsey would, would recommend. Having a very balanced portfolio where you have 20 or 30% in international, uh, 20 or 30% in growth, 20 or 30% in in a small cap, large cap, all those different things. I think, yeah, this, this strategy can work. And to your point, to really have this work, you have to hold it for the for a long, long time. If you're if you're constantly adjusting the allocation and not dollar cost averaging over a long period of time, you're likely going to underperform just you know the S and P 500. So keep that in mind. When it comes to what you have in here, you have you have some good ETFs in here. VEA is a very popular developed market ETF. Um, VYMI is also really good. The one international ETF that I hold, the only one, is VXUS. And the reason why I have it is it is true international exposure. It doesn't have U.S. equities in there. It has North America with Canada. It has emerging markets. It has, um, I think the largest country that where the holdings are is from Japan. It also has the UK in there, uh, Germany, all, all over the globe except for the US. That is why I have VXUS in my portfolio. It's an ETF from Vanguard. Let's take a look at your emerging market equity. VWO, DGS. Okay. All right. So that's 60% allocated to, uh, to, the, to international. I think that's that's pretty high. But uh, let's see what you have in your domestic U.S. equity. You have DES, DGRO, I have that in my portfolio, MTUM, SPHD, SCHD, and you got Noble down there as well. Okay, I think these are high quality. I'm surprised that you don't have, you don't have an S&P 500 or a total market ETF. This may, some, may be something for you to take a look at. This may, may be something that you would be interested in. Take a look at, at these two approaches. Look at a total stock, total U.S. stock market ETF. My favorite is from Vanguard, the VTI, um, ticker symbol VTI. It's a total stock market for total U.S. stock market. Um, that is my my favorite total stock market ETF. They they have others from Vanguard, Fidel, uh, excuse me, from Schwab, from Fidelity, BlackRock, and others. Take a look at that. Also, having a, a S&P 500, I'm actually pretty surprised that you don't have the S&P 500 in here. You have, yes, from uh, from Invesco, you know, the SPHD that tracks the low volatility of the S&P 500, but you're not getting exposure to the full S&P 500. So that is my initial feedback there. You're going to have a lot more diversification in here, but you're likely going to underperform the S&P 500 and you're paying exponentially more in expenses than the S&P 500. Okay, so I know based off of this, you've done a lot of planning, you've done a lot of research. My only thing here is try to make your portfolio as simple as possible. Sometimes we, we overthink things and the simple approach is sometimes the better approach. Uh, the word better in this term can mean many different things. You could look at this from a, a total return perspective. You could look at this as a you know cost benefit in a, uh, approach, where how much you're paying for the expense ratio versus what you're getting. But my my feedback there, or my opinion on this, is think about ways that you can make your portfolio as simple as possible. For example, 
for having you know international exposure, you could limit it to just a couple ETFs, really, really high quality ETFs. When it comes to domestic US, really, you're gonna get the, uh, the same exposure here for the most part with just the, uh, the total US stock market or through the S&P 500, in my opinion, and you're gonna pay less. However, you're not gonna get as high of a dividend. So here, you're getting a higher dividend. So just a few a few things that, that come to my mind uh, when, when seeing the portfolio. However, like if you if you wanna do the research around each one of these ETFs, I think, I think, I think it could work out for you. Um, bonds, you got, okay, these are, these are great. You got BND and you have BNDX. Those are the two that I was looking for from Vanguard. Great and prefers stocks. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. These are, these are great for, for dividends. Spence ratio is pretty high and you're not going to, these are more income oriented. I'm glad that you have it at a lower uh, percentage of your total allocation, right? And as you, as you get older, you can, you can change up the allocation. So my overall feedback here is you, you put a lot of effort into this. I think you know what you're trying to accomplish and don't let anybody stop you from doing it. Try to understand what are things that you can do to simplify it potentially? Are you going to get the same returns? As long as you're sticking with it, you have a goal, you have a plan and you stick to it. You're going to be very, very, very wealthy with, uh, with this approach. And you said you're in your 20s. By the time you're in your mid 30s, you're going to be a millionaire. If you keep, if you're still doing what you're doing, you're going to be a millionaire. So um, my hat goes off to you. Thank you so much for sending over the portfolio and uh, the best of luck to you. All right. The next one is going to be here from Brian. Brian writes, hi, Jake. I like your review my pie series. Keep up the good work. Thank you so much. Um, would like to hear your input on mine if you have time. I'm 28 years old. This is my M1 port, uh, uh, finance portfolio. Is for my regular investment, already maxing out my 403B through nonprofit employer. Okay, very cool. Currently invest $250 a month. I work in a full-time ministry, so I have a fixed income and can't increase my investments. Okay. Um, after months of research and prepping this portfolio through my research at simplysafedividends.com, Great, great website, by the way. Um, I'm consolidating all 18,000 of my investment capital into this M1 Finance folder. Sorry, the transfers are currently pending and not able for your view yet in the link. Okay, that's fine. I know 90 plus holdings is a lot, but I do love research. I love the diversification as well as more dividend payouts. Key being as long as the capital is high enough to yield satisfactory returns. By my calculations, with 18,000 invested, I'll receive $800 in dividends annually. But with investing in a ton of companies, I should get weekly dividend returns over the $10 auto M1 drip. Um, I believe that's going up to uh, $25 here soon. Just keep a, keep an eye on that. Um, I'll include my Google Sheet breakout uh, breakdown of everything here. Curious to see if you think that payout is satisfactory. Let's take a look at it. Well. First off, um, when you mentioned that you're not able to, to earn anything more, I would, I would challenge you to think outside the box and think of what are ways that you can make more money. Um, a few things that you could do, if I were in my 20s, if I could go back a few years, and if I wasn't married, for example, I would think about ways that I could house hack. How could I save money on my rent or my mortgage? How could I, you know, change up my living expenses so that I could get more income that way? What are other side hustles that I could do? What are ways that I could cut my expenses, right? There's three things that you need to focus on. The first thing you need to eliminate consumer debt. You need to keep your expenses as low as possible, right? If you're paying $80 a month for an AT&T phone contract, you need to stop that and go find another contract that is only $25, but you get to keep your phone in the same network, right? Th those are the things that you need to start thinking about. How can I lower my insurance bill? How can I cut my expenses? And then the third thing is, how can I make more money? Do I wanna go and start do door dashing, right, on the weekends? Do I wanna go and start another side hustle? Th those are the three things that you need to do, especially while you're in your 20s. So let's take a look at your portfolio. It looks like the uh, the link did, did end up working out. Um, over the last five years, you're up 11%. You have over a 4.5% dividend yield. You have a very low expense ratio, so very few ETFs in here. You have 99 holdings. Okay, so that is a ton. Um, one thing right off the bat, I can tell you right now, when you have 99 holdings, I promise you, 
it is inevitable, in my opinion, that you're going to be tempted to play with this. You're going to be tempted to uh, sell out of things, buy into things. When you're first setting this up right, it can get really exciting. The thing is, is you want to focus on quality and you don't want to go too, too crazy, right? Because you don't want to change up your portfolio if you can help it. So let's take a look at your allocation. It looks like you got 20% to real estate, 14 to utilities. You have SPHD in there, so monthly uh, uh, dividend ETF in there. Industrials, healthcare, financials, energy. Um, okay, okay, exposure to the rich. Excited to see that. All right, let's take a look at some of these. Uh, you got 18 in here. This is your real estate. Um, ESS, ELX, Cube, AVB. A lot of these are in my portfolio. Yeah, I mean, a lot of these, these are high dividend payers. So you got you got the 6% in here. So in my opinion, I would focus on quality here. I would focus, my favorite sectors here in, uh, in the real estate investment trust uh, space, I really like industrials. I really like data centers. I really like cell towers. And I really like public storage units. Those are my four favorite. Um, and in each four of those, I have specific favorites that I like. If you're interested in that, you can check out my portfolio. There's, uh, I, I share a few of those in my portfolio. Um, but yeah, you just have to be careful, right? Just this last week, VTR cut their, their dividend by over 40%, right? So a lot of these, they're, they're going to get beaten up pretty bad during market uh, downturns, but you know, they're paying a higher current yield. So but yeah, I mean, it doesn't make up more than 20% of your portfolio. I think it's fine. Utilities, you got Duke, BIP. A lot of these I'm not actually familiar with. Um, when it comes to the to utilities, my personal opinion is I focus on, on quality and on market size, market cap. Um, I want really, really big established companies. For example, Duke, I like Southern Company, Dominion, Nextair Energy. Um, others, I'm, you know, these may be regionally, and you you're familiar with these because they're in your where you, where you live, for example. Um, but me personally, I, I like focusing on the big ones, the big ones that I know. Uh, industrials, Caterpillar, 3M, Raytheon, great, great. Yeah, there's there's a lot of high quality companies in here. My favorites, I really like 3M, Caterpillar. Um, I don't think you have Waste Management or Lockheed Martin in here. Those are also really, really high quality ones. Healthcare, you got Johnson & Johnson, Advi, MDT. Yeah, a lot of these are really good. Um, a lot of these companies I've, I've heard of, they're, they're well established. Some of them I'm not as familiar with. Uh, Ori is really good. I don't have it in my portfolio, but really, really good. Travelers, yeah. Yeah, these are good companies. Um, I guess my initial thought here is we're, we're about halfway through here. Um, I would encourage you to go through your portfolio and really ask yourself and go through each one of them and say, okay, do I know exactly what these companies do? Do I know what, um, what Chevron does? Do I know what ExxonMobil does? And if you don't understand, like really understand what these companies do, consider, especially now while you're still building that portfolio, consider getting out of them. Consider getting out of them and focusing, doubling down on the ones that you do understand. Um, I promise you it's going to be a little bit, uh, it may be an emotional thing in the beginning because you put so much work and effort into setting your portfolio up, but I promise you over the long term, this is probably what you're going to end up doing anyways. Because once, you, once you've noticed, like for example, when you're adding thousands of dollars every month and once your portfolio gets to a higher balance and when you see your portfolio down if it's down like three or four dollars that's not a big emotional deal but once it's down in the thousands that's when it really hits you and you're like okay all right <laughs> it's time to to double down on the ones that i really really understand uh speaking from personal experience there uh telecom you got comcast uh activision at&t yeah these are really good um you don't have verizon here in here verizon could be another one that you could take a look at uh, basic materials, you got APD, Sherwin-Williams, Linda, PPG, International Paper. Yeah, these are good. These are really good. One that I really like as well, probably one of my favorite basic material companies, Ecolab. has a lower starting yield, but it's a, it's a good dividend growth company. Exposure to the rich. What do we got in here? Uh, Black, oh, okay, so I got gotcha. you. All right, BlackRock, sure. 
Um, consumer staples. We got Walgreens, Unilever, Pepsi, Flower Foods, Coke. Yeah, yeah, these are good. These are really good. Discretionary. Now, with these ones, you got to be careful, right? With uh, with the virus, with Texas Roadhouse, you got to be careful. But with Target, McDonald's, Genuine Parts, Walmart, Home Depot, these are great. Um, got to be careful with the uh, the restaurants right now. They're 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 getting beaten up pretty bad. Tech, you got Texas Instruments, ADP. Yeah, these are these are good. Unless you fully understand what these companies do, I would focus on on the the largest cap companies like Apple and Microsoft, um, and and Intel, you know, Nvidia, those companies that that you probably really really understand. If you don't know what ADP does, if you don't know what ADI does, or or such. You might want to consider whether you, you want to hold them in the portfolio. That's my opinion. All right. Well, thank you so much for sending this over. I can tell right off the bat you put a lot of effort into this. Once again, you're going to be really, really tempted to play with your portfolio. And over the long term, that is what you want to avoid as much as possible. What you want to try to do is make it as simple as possible so that over the long term, you're not changing up the investments, buying in and out of companies. Really, you're, you're going to make your money over the long term and in consistency. And so that is that is my opinion. But thank you again so much for sending this over. I hope that this was helpful. All right, let's take a look at the last one here. The last one here is from Mitch. Mitch writes, Hi, Jake. My name is Mitch, and I recently found your channel on YouTube. Love the content. Been watching all of your videos in my free time. Hey, Mitch, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate the support, and I appreciate you saying that. Um, what uh, what do you have here? So it looks like you, you're riding here wanting to know if you would take a look at my portfolio that I recently put together on M1 and also give me your thoughts on my M1, uh, my 401k setup. I'm 27 years old and I recently started investing outside of my Roth IRA. When the markets dropped uh, with the happenings in the world, uh, my Roth IRA has been running for about three years with a company who manages it for me. Okay. My thought of my Roth IRA is to set it up and forget it. Absolutely agree. Um, let the company manage it and grow it to access in my retirement. My number one goal, uh, investment-wise, is to my to max my Roth IRA. Just doesn't make sense not to with the uh, the tax benefits. I, I agree. I mean, you want to take advantage of the uh, the tax advantages that come with with a Roth IRA or a traditional IRA, I think the uh, the tax advantages are really, really important. Okay, so um, I started a new job that gives me access to a good 401k setup with Vanguard funds and others. I have five funds selected that I contribute about $100 per paycheck to. To them, funds are listed below with percentages, percentage contributions and ETF versions uh, for reference. Would like to have this be set, uh, set it and forget an investment vehicle as well like my Roth. Okay, so let's take a look and see what you have here. Um, you got the S&P 500 at 25%. You got the U.S. mid cap 25. You have U.S. Uh, small cap at 25. You have uh, emerging international at 20 and bonds at five. Okay, so here let me share a true story. When so I work in the technology sector and so I've changed jobs a couple of times over the last couple of years. And every time I've changed a job, I've taken my 401k with me and I've taken it out of the old. Uh, brokerage and in, put it into a new brokerage. And what I've noticed is by doing that, I'm buying and selling more. And so before, when I first got my, my first job, I had it set up almost identical to this, almost identical. And what I've noticed is to get really the benefit of the uh, U.S. mid-market, small cap, and international, you have to be invested for a lot longer period. And what I've noticed is as I've, I've done this two or three times where I've sold out of the brokerage and moved it over into my new company's 401k, for example, I've noticed that I've underperformed a lot in the, uh, the international and the small cap. For whatever reason, uh, it just the timing didn't, didn't work out in my favor, favor. And so what I've decided to do, if I feel like I'm going to change uh, companies in the next five years, I put 100% in the S&P 500. That's, that's what I've decided to do. Um, simply because that time period, you know, one to five years, there's so many things that could happen in the international market. And that is why I have chosen to do that. Now, if you're going to stay in your company for the next 10, 20 years, I think this is fine. I think having it exactly like that, I don't think you can go wrong. 
But for me personally, given my scenario, right, where I've changed jobs a few times, I've noticed keeping it simple and just keeping it in the S&P 500 um, would have been better looking backward looking. And I'm hoping, uh, you know, hoping it'll be easier for me um, in the future as I, I progress in my career. But I understand that not everyone is like me, right? That, you know, changes jobs uh, more as frequently. Once again, I, I work in the technology sector and the software sector. And so it's a little bit, the change is a little bit more, um, more common in my line of work. Okay. And so it looks like you, you go on to write, let's see here, really just looking at, you know, which companies to, to have in your portfolio, um, you were considering transferring to Robinhood, but Robinhood does now charge a $75 fee. Um, it doesn't always make sense. Sometimes it makes sense to pay it. It depends on, on your particular situation. Div dividend investing is a cool thought, and I'd like to have a portfolio set up some short-term growth and then long-term dividends. Okay, good. All right, let's take a look at your portfolio. It, I've actually never seen it where the graph doesn't work. It's possible that these little icons are, are maybe playing with the user interface of the, uh, the graph, I, I don't know. Um, but let's take a look. It doesn't look like it's showing your dividend yield. You have 64 holdings. Let's see if it pulls it up in the individual. Okay, there we go. All right, so everything else is working in individual slices. I don't know why it's not working with your overall portfolio. So you got 216% um, percent over the last five years in your technology slice. You got VGT, Visa, MasterCard, Square, PayPal, NVIDIA, Intel, Okta. Okay, some of these are not, not dividend paying, but uh, they're really still high quality uh, growth companies. These are great. I really like VGT, by the way. My I really have loaded up on VGT simply because if you know anything about the technology sector, there's a lot of disruptors. Um, there's a lot of uh, incumbents like Microsoft and, and Apple, but there's a lot of up and coming software companies. And it's just difficult to know, look into the future, which companies are gonna outperform others. So that's why I really, really like VGT and just, you get a slice of everything. Um, let's see here, you got growth momentum ETFs. Let's see what you have in here, QQQ, um, MTUM, all right, cool. Uh, my wife holds QQQ, I think this is a great one. This, is, uh, this tracks the NASDAQ. This is a really, really good ETF. Uh, healthcare. You got VHT, Johnson & Johnson, Avi, United Healthcare, and Pfizer. This is really good. I like this. This is, this is absolutely fine. Um, what do you got in financials? Financials, you got VFH, you got JP Morgan, Berkshire, uh, Progressive. So a little bit more on the insurance side, I guess, with Berkshire and with Progressive. But this is, this is a good balance, actually. You got credit cards here as well. Um, I'm curious to see what's going to happen with American Express with a lot of companies with their employees not traveling. I'm curious to see how that's going to work. With American Express, what, I've, what I believe is it's more business, uh, B2B business facing um, and not so much consumer facing like a Discover, for example, uh, or a Capital One, for example. Consumer staples, VDC. So you got the uh, the Vanguard sector specific ETF in each one. That's that's fine. That, that works out really well. Uh, Walmart, Pepsi, Procter and Gamble. These are really really good, really good companies. Uh, you're get, this slice is going to do very very well in a, a market downturn. So this is this is good. Uh, let's see, real estate. You got it at eight percent. VNQ, PSA, great. Prologis, great. Equinix, great. DLR. These this is absolutely great. So. This is, this, I love this. Okay, so you got public, so I was saying this earlier in the video, the, the different sectors that I like, I like, um, I like industrials, you got Prologis. I like data centers, you got DLR. I like cell towers, you got AMT and CCI. Three of the three, you're three of three, and you also got public storage. You are four of four, my friend. This is great. I absolutely love, this is a high quality real estate. Like if I were to do it over again, I would do something very, very similar to this. I would maybe even consider adding realty income. Oh, you know, but other than that, this is, this is amazing. Um, industrials, what do you got in here? Industrials, you got waste management, Lucky Martin, Honeywell, 3M, Granger, FedEx, Caterpillar, and Deer. These are really, really good. Um, you got three of them in there. You got waste management, you got Lockheed Martin. These are really good. The only one that I don't have in my portfolio, or there's two, I don't have FedEx. I have UPS. Both are great. Um, I don't have Granger. Um, Granger, I've looked into Granger in the past. 
I, it has a great track record, but I personally, I don't know how, I don't know. It's hard for me to kind of see where, where they're going to go in the future. But for right now, they're doing, they're doing really, really good. This is, this is great, man. I really, really like your portfolio. All right, utilities, you got VPU, you got Dominion, you got Southern Company, you got Nexter Energy, you got Duke, you got American Waterworks. Okay, this is really good. This is really good. Wow. Okay, uh, discretionary. You got Amazon, Starbucks, Target. There's only one in here that you don't have that I would really, really like to see or what I would recommend is McDonald's. McDonald's is a really, really good one. It's hard not to have McDonald's in, in here. Um, Amazon there, good. Uh, do, do, do. Materials, you got, yeah, this is fine. With materials, it's very difficult for me. I almost consider the same thing. There's a few really good basic material companies out there, but if you're unsure of which ones, this is typically a, a sector where consumers are not so familiar with. I think going with the, uh, the Vanguard Materials Index Fund is a really smart choice. Hey man, this is a really, really good portfolio. I really, really like your portfolio. I think you have, I wish that we could see the total dividend yield and the expense ratio, but I really like your portfolio. Once again, probably my favorite here is the real estate. Man, this is, this is great. I love seeing this. All right, everybody, this was a little bit of a longer video. Thank you so much for sending over your portfolio. If, uh, if you sent your portfolio in the past, I do have it in my inbox. I haven't forgotten you. Um, I will be reviewing uh, your portfolio in a future video. If you would like me to review your portfolio, send me over an email to the link in the description below. You know, give me a little bit of context, your age, how much you're investing in the portfolio every single month, you know, the, the type of portfolio is in a taxable account, a Roth account, and some of your goals, right? Are you trying to retire in 10 years and 15 years? What what are your goals around that? And then I'll try to add here and I'll try to add my my opinion and perspective based off of the information that you give me. I really, really like this series. I think it is so interesting to see how other people are investing and kind of understand, you know, how other people do it. Thank you everybody who have supported the channel. If you're new to the channel, I'd invite you to subscribe. If you like today's video, like the video, and I will catch everybody in the next video.